got there? I got a saw blade. What do you got? I got another saw blade. But you know what I see? I see what a I saw? knife. Oh. <laughs> I okay. saw a saw blade, but now I see a knife. Um, so, so what we're going to do, where we're fixing to go with this, is saw blades get to a point, carbide tip saw blades get to a point where the carbide has been sharpened so many times it can no longer be sharpened. Yeah. And then you might say to yourself, you might say. You might say, what are you going to do with this old blade? Yeah. So uh, this old blade, this old blade, this old blade are going to get turned into knives with a few qualifiers, which wow. is we don't know anything about the steel, really. We don't know what kind of steel it is. It may or may not be hardenable. We will do a test. But ultimately, what George and I and potentially don't you. Don't cut yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. What George and I and potentially you at home are going to learn is how to shape a knife how to design a knife, and how to basically structurally build a knife. Hardening is a different science that we may or may not be able to go into here. But if this is a well, We're gonna quench them because it's gonna look really cool on that camera. Oh yeah. So yeah. we're gonna quench them no matter what. We're but, gonna quench them, we'll see what happens. And, but, and we're gonna make wooden handles. We'll do wooden which handles. Which there's also some edumacation that'll come out yep. of that. Yep. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to making a knife. You know, keeping it sexy, the utility of it, the feel in your hand, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. All right, switch to this camera. Yep. So um, one of the things you can look for if you want to do this is if if you have like a big sawmill saw blade, blade yeah. those are the ones that I use most that often. isn't carbide tipped is where I'm going with those. Yeah. That you probably have a better quality steel throughout the plate That's right. than what we have here. Right. Because the strength, the integrity of the tooth on this comes from the carbide. Right. On those old sawmill blades, they will harden steel or tool steel throughout. Yeah. So anywhere you cut, and plus you also have a much big broader area to cut a knife out of or even a meat cleaver. Yeah. yeah. Um, are we, are, is this a competition? It certainly looks like it. I think we, all, all we need now is digital up. clocks behind us. I think. <laughs> Ticking away. All right, so. Um, Anthony anxiety. Next thing we're gonna do is some design work. I know the profile of knife I wanna make. Mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to ignore Jimmy and not see what he's doing so I don't steal. Jimmy's done this way more than I have, so I'm gonna, I am gonna steal ideas wherever I can. Yeah, right. Plagiarism is a, is a form of flattery. Yep, we don't mind. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm leaving for my table. Okay, I'll be Quit over here. Quit stealing ideas. I'll be at my table. You're doing a David Bowie kind of a style. Yeah. Well, you know what? I was going to do like a like a, they call it a drop tip Bowie, where the tip drops down like a little bit like that, which I might still do. I might do that just for a little added style. But I'm going to cut this broad shape out, and I'm going to use a cutting disc here on the angle grinder. But I'll stand up when we're ready to go. All right. So I'm going to do. Is it Tonto? Do you know? Am I saying that right? Do you know that style? Where yeah, it's, yeah. Just a very straight blade. Yeah. Um, Tonto. I, I've always wanted one. Yeah. So I'm going to make one. So, and part of what I like about it is because we're cutting with those angle grinders, it's, it's very straight. lineal. Yeah. So. Nice straight. Um, Try and get that little shallow curve in there. At, across the top, yeah. like a little rainbow. Yeah. But the knife, but the blade is straight on those, right? No, they both. Ha they have like a little bit of like a. Concave, just a very convex. Slightly. Okay. Very okay. slightly. Kind of, kind of like a, like a samurai sword. So that's why I brought this because yeah. I was anticipating you yeah. saying I should introduce a little curve. Yeah. I'm trying to be flexible, like yeah. this curve. <laughs> so when we cut, a couple things. Um, Oh, water. Have some water because one of the things we don't want to do is overheat the plate and um, maybe if it's got some temper in it, take the temper out. So we you don't want to lose your temper. Um, and then the other thing I have on hand is a huge form of water. <laughs> Fire thing. We are about to make a bunch of sparks, so it's a good idea to be ready for worst case scenario um, just in case something really bad. I happens. always keep a fire extinguisher. Anytime I'm doing anything that creates sparks of fire, right? Even when I weld, I always keep it right nearby. Yeah, it's, I think it's a smart move. Yep. All right. I think we're going to get noisy. So I'm going to um, cut. And you want masks on, a mask on, because we're going to throw a lot of junk. Crews being the divas they are, we had to stop because Terry wanted to switch to slow motion because Jimmy's about to do cool stuff. Ready? So I think sparks on slow-mo are typically cool, so.
So the thing, when, when you're figuring out your plan and what your knife is going to look like, keep in mind that we're doing this cutting with a cutoff wheel and an angle grinder. So you're not going to get in there. It's not like running a scroll saw. You can't get in there and do real sharp turns. But here, where I'm trying to do this little uptick on this handle, I can't make that turn with this. But what I can do now is come in like relief cuts on a bandsaw, zoop, 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 in order to get closer with this so I don't have to do so much grinding or whatever later. I like that big shape. Yep, I wanted to keep the hole for fun. Just for funsies. I like that. All right, so anyway, I'm sorry I, I interrupted you because you did some research. I did a little research on what this particular metal is inside of a carbide tipped saw blade. And what that typically is, is a low grade spring steel, typically. So it is good for what we're doing. Uh, we can try and harden it. I haven't gotten that far in my research. We just did the file test. And it does file, but not as easy as the metal on the vise. So, so I, it, it has a varying degree of hardness. It's it, not. In it's, addition to the sparky spark, yeah. this is a cool way to like, get some hard. idea of the metallurgy. Because if, if it's the softer it is, the easier it'll file. Right. Like if, pine versus hard maple. Like, for instance, let's see, the hardest piece of metal right around us now is these tips. You can tell the sound difference, too. Yeah. You could hear that grabbing yeah. and cutting away. So this is in between those. Okay. So um, we're going to still try the quenching experiment, mm -hmm. mostly because I think it's going to look really cool. <laughs> um, we don't know if we're going to gain anything from it or not. Um, we're a couple steps away from that. Right now, what we're fixing to do is um, refine these shapes a whole lot better. We're just using flap sanders on the angle grinders. And we're very intentionally, um, Jimmy pointed this out when we were off camera a second ago, we're very intentionally sticking with angle grinders for this whole thing because um, they're accessible and yeah. kind of everybody owns an angle grinder. So we're not using any funky tools here. And I, I was talking off camera. I am very pleasantly surprised that I didn't snap a cutoff wheel when I did this yeah. um, because of the curve that's here. And of course that cutoff wheel is four inch and a half inches diameter straight. So it's not really designed to do that. But, but don't forget that tip of that grinding wheel like right here. So if you're looking at it at the end, it's only that much of it needs to go through. So you can cut quite a bit of a curve. You don't want to go, the deeper you go in, the more flatter you really need to have your curve. So if you just go in with the tip of that On circle. On a thicker chunk of steel, we couldn't get away with this. Right. Like well, if that was a half inch thick, it'd be tough. Right, it would be very tough. You just, ha what you'd have to do is make your curve really wide to give out clearance for the back of this as it comes around. But baby steps is the key to that to make sure. Yeah. Um, now that I've had this in my hand a couple times, because it's set free from the blade, I'm not thrilled about the length of material I left for my handle. So I'm going to take some away here. The grinder will do that easy. I think I'm going to shorten my blade by about three quarters of an inch and add that to the handle. And I want to leave, I don't want to build the handle out in this direction past the end of the metal because I think with my handle, I want to leave that showing the expansion slot so that you can still tell that came from a table saw blade. What you got? Look at that. Really? You, like. <laughs> Let me see. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Actually, the only criticism I have of what you're working on here is your blade is a little too shallow. Now, imagine a hand chisel. If it has like a blunted bevel. A short bevel. Yeah, a short bevel tends to stay duller more often than a long bevel. You can get a nice yeah. clean shave. So it's the same thing here. You have a really stunted bevel. You see, I brought my bevel back almost to here. Yep. And I still am not sharp because I want to make sure that when we quench it, we're not super sharp. We don't want to go to that. That's all going to turn blue. So we want to well, leave a little bit of material there before. And one of the things I think happened when the cameras weren't running as we were talking for a second about as you thin the edge down, you got to be 
progressively more careful with the angle grinder. Right, because there's heat it up less faster. material here. It's easy to blue it because right. it's so thin. Right. All right, so I can bring my angle back. And I was giving you this uh, little tip here. I think I was able to smooth this all out because with the tip of the, 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 the grinding wheel, it's a, it's a dimple. You're putting a dimple and you're trying to move that dimple across and then do it all at the same time. And a way, just like using a, a, a planer for wood or a hand plane for wood, if you use the file, you can bring that bevel back all clean and evenly. This is a cool setup. You know, if you're, if you're primarily a woodworking shop, but every once in a while you do something like this, yeah. and you don't really want to dedicate a bench space to a yeah, metal vise. I, I like this idea. Um, just having one available, yeah, that you can clamp it, Jed. And that's a great um, vise. That's a great pattern. Well, yeah, so, th so what's cool with this You could change is, the shape and direction and everything. When, this, when the jaw is loose, it loosens from this, so it'll pivot. But then you can also do this. Yeah, that is a great vise. And work in the other direction. So if I wanted a... Trying to think, would that help me now? Maybe, I don't know. But yeah, if you want yep. to go in the other plane. So here's where we're at. Um, we're not sure completely what we have on the metal as far as like quality of metal, hardness of metal. So what Jimmy's experimenting with is an off cut from the table saw blade, and then we're gonna quench it. And the test will be, does that get it harder than what we started with? And the file is gonna help tell us that. Yep. But Part of what we're running into here, the ideal way to do this would be in a forge where you can get uniform heat over a really large area. Right. And um, we're trying it, Jimmy's trying it with torches. And it's the problem is like that tip is ready to go maybe to quench, but the area back here is not. It's and hard as soon to keep as he, an even heat here. As baby. soon as he moves away, we're. Well, let's see what it does anyway. Ready? So in the can is just um, off the shelf vegetable oil. That's what we're quenching in. And there's different stuff going on. Um, there's a lot of metallurgy. There's a lot of chemistry here. You can quench in oil. You can quench in water. You can quench in waste oil. You can quench in quench specific liquids. Um, the reason we did vegetable oil and map torches instead of a forge and some weird quenching oil is that everybody's got vegetable oil and a lot of people have this style of torch. Feels like it what hardened say a little bit. Sounds like it hardened a little bit. You hear the difference? Yeah. So that that test worked. So you could hear that versus you have, it's, you have kind of a raspy voice there. Yeah, it's kind of a higher pitch. <laughs> I'm making a file joke. I know, I was laughing on the inside. <laughs> I think I'm very funny. I was laughing. Anyway, so what, so what we could do. So what we could do with the knives is try and maintain that red hot on the edge. So we okay. can go like this, just on this edge. And this is much thinner than that, so this will stay redder faster. It'll get redder faster, but it'll also go colder faster. And so we can try and do that and then... And we need to double check on yours. Um, we're full to about here on the, the canola in the can. Yeah. yeah. If we just give it a tilt like that, I'm okay. fully submerged. So I'll be okay. able to do that. Okay. So we'll just put a chunk of wood in So there. we got to go um, one at a time because um, we can only heat and quench like onesie twosie. Um, it's a little thin. And like in my world of making knives, um, it's a little flimsy. It's a, it's a little thin. Um, this than this most wouldn't be a uh, yeah. take it in the woods and work with it kind of a knife. Yeah. But like Jimmy said earlier, it's an experience of shaping a blade, working with a blade, putting a handle on a blade, which we're also going to do. There's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Um, so I think, again, if we were in a plate where it wasn't carbide tipped, where the whole blade, the blade was the blade, um, you'd have a thicker plate to work with. You'd have a, a thicker knife when you're done. More robust. Don't make a machete out of a table saw blade. It's going to be too thin. Um, one of the things that intrigues me so much about blacksmithing is uh, reading the color of the metal to yeah. know where you're at and yellow versus red versus orange. And then the other, the chemistry or physics that's so cool there is when you get it to a certain temperature, even something that's ferrous metal that's completely magnetic will no longer be magnetic yep. at a certain temperature and then that gives you a clue about 
where yeah, you're where at in the heating process. It's, all, it's, it's really amazing stuff. Okay, we'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Doctor. Smells like we're making french fries. Or, yeah, popcorn or something. Are you, are you looking for the file yeah, test? That. Yeah. Let's see. We may not get hot enough. But... It seems a little harder. Yeah, maybe. But we could still scratch it, but that doesn't mean that it's not a certain type of Rockwell. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm gonna, I want the experience, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to mine. And I have less metal in mine. Yep. So maybe I'll, um, maybe it'll heat easier, but um, no matter what, I'm gonna do it. All right, now, that sound that you had in your ear before. Oh, huh? because I, I think even on a stroke I was cutting before. You feel like you're cutting? No, not, no. Oh, okay, so maybe you got something. I was digging in before. Yeah, so you feel a difference. And, I, and I'm pretty much getting nothing now. Yeah, okay, I'm then not that's even, it. I'm really not even scratching it. And there you go, then it worked. Cool. Um, so, to get our holes punched here. Yeah. Um, I would say we'll try this, I'll show you. So this is cool metallurgy that. We're doing the same thing. We're taking it to red hot, but it's going in the opposite direction because you're not quenching. It's right. taking the hardness out of it, right? Yep. We're going to just let it get red hot. Really soak it in that red heat for a couple of, maybe a minute. Are you going bigger? Yeah, I want to give my. I'm going to use eighth inch brazing rod for okay. my pins. Okay. So I want to have a little more wiggle room to get stuff. Yeah. So I read a weird thing once that said it's suggestion to get where you got there was in a drill press, put the drill bit in upside down and let this end run oh. until it gets uber hot. Oh, that's interesting. Then flip it over and, you know, you're making that happen. Yeah. Then turn it over and let the twist oh, portion. Oh, that's really cool. I never heard. That's a great idea. Yeah, the lower RPM helps a lot. Yeah, the low, because otherwise if you go too fast, what you're doing is basically generating a lot of friction and you'll dull out your drill bit before you do anything. We are ready to put handles on these, but do we go back and clean these up again first? Yeah, we could take these to a palm sander and clean them up. That would be a good way to get these nice back to metal. Okay. We're going to do that. Where are you? We're going <laughs> to... There's like 4,000 cameras set up here, and I don't know what to do. Um, we're going to do that polishing step off camera. All we're going to do is take... Palm sander. I'm there I'm yeah. What we're going to do is... Go ahead. We're just going to sand them until they look cooler than they do now. Yeah, if we had a belt grinder, I'd take them to the Scotch-Brite wheel. Or if you have Scotch-Brite on an angle grinder, Scotch-Brite would be a perfect opportunity right now to get that old metal back. Okay, and then we'll uh, come back and we'll handle this. I got my yeah. handle prepared. We're using brazing rod as pins, as per your suggestion. And you had this cool... It's Madrone is the wood in there and then epoxy. So our... Um, our blanks are just like each other, but different. Mine is Madrone and green epoxy. Yours is Madrone and red. And we located our holes that we drilled through in the last segment on the wood, drilled them all the way through the blocks, and then cut them in half, and then prepared the surface that touches the blade, and then also prepared the area that's going to be unreachable with the sander. Yeah, because once we're on in. there, you can't round. And so now we're going to epoxy in place, let them dry, and then we'll grind what we can up to the inside parts of the blade that are still inside there. And you did a, um, you took your blade, show, show that guy, um, a little further than I did. Um, and I, I intentionally left mine rough looking because it's rough looking, like it's a handmade knife from a table saw blade. So I kind of, I like that those scratches are still yeah, on they there showed to a little give bit. it you can see them kind here of and, a rustic look. All right, two part epoxy, um, no, um, Nothing hugely earth shattering here. I've got one part in the bucket already. We'll do a little of this. 
I have denatured alcohol nearby so that if you get epoxy someplace you don't want it, denatured alcohol will take that off. So, um, to get a wipe in there. Yeah, as, as if the epoxy cures up in this inside corner right there, it's going to be horrific to get that out later. Yeah, you're going to want to stretch so, a blade trying to get it um, out. It's easier to clean that out. And then, because we don't have gloves on, if we have a little epoxy on our fingers, the denatured alcohol will take it off of there too. So we will come back after the um, after the glue is dry. We're going to come back, shape the handles just a little bit. After the commercial break. After the commercial break. And I would like to get um, finish the edge on here, and then I don't know, whatever we can do to kind of see how they cut. Like we yeah. could bring a block of cheese and a block of pepperoni or something. Yep, that would be good. That'd be kind of cool. Yours will cut the cheese. Mine will cut the pepperoni. Okay. Careful. So use the rest of that to make a rivet. <laughs> okay, I overmixed. I didn't want to run out. I, heard I didn't know if you were an excessive gluer. <laughs> All right, um, we're going to watch glue dry. We're actually going to go and eat pot roast and have dinner. Right. And we're not going to watch glue dry, but we're going to come back later and finish this. In a world. In a world where pot roast is king. <laughs> Got it. In order to shape the handle, the first thing I'm doing is putting masking tape on the blade so I don't cut myself there. And use a pair of nippers to get those brass pins as close as I can to the wood. I like starting on this 12 inch sanding disc because it's very aggressive and it's going to let me hog a lot of wood off really fast. I like to start on the big broad flat belt. This way I like to keep everything in one plane and I can start to develop a series of facets. And as I develop a series of facets, I start making them closer and closer together till they begin to become round. For me, went from the disc to the belt. I, I think I've got like 80 grit paper on the disc and 120 on the belt. So I'm roughing out on the disc and then in the end doing the same thing as Jimmy. I'm rolling the handle over and over and over again on the belt to try to get that smoothed out. But it doesn't let me get to the inside curve on the bottom of my handle. So to get to the inside curve on the bottom of the handle, we'll use this bench top oscillating spindle thing. Does a great job at removing any material on an inside curve. And then there we both started rolling the corners over too. And again, it's we're both gonna end up with a bunch of facets here and eventually just keep leveling, leveling. The facets get smaller and smaller, which eventually turns them into a curve. Um, so yeah, we're starting to shape the handle with rolling it and then just keep feeling it in your hand. It's very subjective for where you wanna end up. It's just gotta feel good in your hand. The reason I like to do the facets on opposite sides as I go is so that I could see where I am as far as making one side symmetrical to the other. If I do a series of facets, I could see exactly how they're mirrored on the opposite side of the handle. And once I feel satisfied that I've removed enough material, I begin to roll those facets into the round shape, knowing that I'm relatively close as far as a mirrored image goes from one side of the handle to the other. Using this oscillating spindle sander, I could really get in close and start eliminating some of those facets and rolling over any of those little sharp edges that I could feel with the palm of my hand. I'm very comfortable shaping with a file, which is something I often always reach for first. So I did as much removal as I can on all the sanding devices, and now I'm just going to blend everything with the file. And for the finer finish, I'll go to the random orbit sander before I then go to the flat disc. The random orbit sander can be a little hard to handle on a small knife handle like this, but you know, creative uh, for me holding the sander in my lap and then using it upside down is a good way for me to manage that. And um, the flap disc that Jimmy's using, that flutter sander, is man, talk about blending your facets together. Ready to be finished, dude? Let's finish. Or Scandinavian, see, uh, or? Come on, I'll just go in. <laughs> so we're ready for our finish. Little, I see you, you like to use oil and vinegar. I prefer vinaigrette. I, balsamic is my favorite. No. Um, this is a mix. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, one third linseed oil, one third mineral spirits, one third shellac, one third something else. No, that wouldn't work. Hold on so a second. This is one third, one third, one third. Yeah, and it's, I mean, they're one third by volume. What well, high school you went to? They are. <laughs> We haven't even talked about my chemistry degree yet, have we? So they are, but I don't know why they settle out like that, I don't know, but to be serious, one third boiled linseed oil, one third shellac, one third mineral spirits. So I use it on lathe turnings, 
frequently. So shake it up, baby. What one third um, is this, by the way? I don't know. <laughs> don't hold my feet to the fire on details, <laughs> details, details. Um, dries very fast. It's going to be a little bit glossy. Just hit it up. Hit it. There you go. I'll hit you up. I'll get it on my hand. Oh, I'm trying to stay clean. Oh, baby. Look at that. That's the good stuff right there. Look at that. Wow. I didn't even realize what color this thing was supposed to be until I see it now. It reminds me of my dad's workshop. Because of the shellac? Was that a... No, because of the smell. I know, but... Yeah. Or, or the linseed oil also has such a Probably strong Probably the shellac. I think it's the shellac. This and a little Hank Williams playing in the background. Take me oh, right back to that. 10 years old. Okay, we're going to uh, let finish dry. Look at how beautiful that looks. It really came out. And then we'll, uh, we're going to do a... And we're going to do a knife test. Cut test. See if this will cut. What do you think? I think they both came out really nice. If this is going to be a first knife project for somebody at home, you can see how accessible this really is. Yeah, that's, and that accessible word is what I really like about this. If you, and people end up with old saw blades, like we talked about at the beginning. Yeah. They don't know what to do with them. And um, not a lot of specialized tools here. Um, would you like to try yours on the sausage, as you mentioned, Let's I don't know, some time ago? Oh, look at that. We could have spent a little bit more time sharpening them, but yeah. it's not bad. We've got to cut um, enough for the whole crew. I could have spent more time cleaning mine. I'm leaving a little <laughs> residue on the cheese. <laughs> but it, I'm sure it'll be fine. In the, in the world of things I've ingested in my shop, I think... Um, no. Metal grindings are probably pretty low I'll on that. I'll tell you that. how it tastes. Is it cheesy? It's Wisconsin cheese, I baby. The, uh, the blade polish gives it a nice <laughs> je ne sais quoi. It's good. Local? Uh, bought it at the grocery store just five miles up the road, you bet. Yeah. Boom. Always buy local. All right. Um, parting wisdom for people who want to do this at home. Don't overheat when you're cutting. It's a big deal. Don't necessarily have to quench, right? Not really. But I think the most important thing of all is just give it a try. Worst that can happen is you fail and you just cut into another saw blade. Well, that seems to be everyone's biggest problem is just getting started. Yeah. They talk about it. They worry about it. They Paralysis through analysis. What if I don't do it right? What if I break this? Just get started. You won't know until you do it. And then when you make your first one, your next one will be better, and then the third one will be better than that one, and so on. That's how you get good at anything. It's a cool project. I think we did a really good job. It's a very accessible project for the average shop guy. Not too complicated. Made from found materials for the most part. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's it. I and think, and, and if we weren't stopping and talking and messing around and talking to cameras, We'd be done this would go really fast. Really I mean, this is like an afternoon project. Hundred percent, yeah. Um, and um, I know one of the things you talk about a lot is don't don't let fear of failure or whatever else stop you from experimenting. Yeah. I mean, clearly this is like metalworking, not woodworking. But part of the reason we threw it in to the video is because it's cool. And then and you know, every once in a while, as a woodworker, you might want to make use this type of t use this type of technology to make your own scraper or anything yeah. you know you might want to make a scraper that fits a an alcove or something specific so it's all basically the same type of work and i think the most important thing of any of this is just get started so many people get tied up in worrying what if what if what if what if just get started then you answer all those questions you have a reference point your next project will be better than this one and the third one will be better than the second one and so on and that's how you build your skills yeah this is fun how do you like the wisconsin cheese it's really good. I love it. All right. Knife cool. making. Knife from a saw blade. Success. Success.